Okay, so now that we've got our uh, frets all cut and filed and ready to go, uh, the next thing we want to do is we want to make sure that we have absolutely no debris left in these uh, fret slots. So I've went ahead and I've used uh, you know my little cleaning tool that I used in the previous steps. And I just went by and made sure that I had everything completely out of there. Vacuumed it probably about two or three times. And uh, we're looking pretty good now. Uh, we got everything out of there. You can kind of actually see in there. You can see the bottom of the slots. So we know we're pretty good to go there. Uh, so I can't stress enough the importance of that step. Uh, this is your last chance to do it. So uh, take the time to do it. Okay, now uh, we got this uh, fret press call installed here. It's got a 16 inch radius and it's just got a little uh, a piece of brass with a little kind of groove in there to kind of mimic or to fit on the crown of the fret. And uh, you can see here that it tilts, which is good because uh, if the guitar is not completely level or the table is not completely level, then this can compensate for that little bit or whatever to get it to uh, press straight, you know, right across the fret. Okay, so before we, uh, before we actually press these things and what we're going to do, is we're just going to tap them into place and uh, I just use a hammer with a uh, it's got a plastic head and a rubber head on the other side um, it's fine to use something like this if you're just going to be tapping into place and, and using a, a press call like this um, if you're going to be using uh, an actual hammer to hammer in the frets I would recommend getting a fret hammer uh, same kind of idea but I believe it's got a plastic head and it's got like a brass head on the other side but you'll want that brass head um, to kind of get the driving force that that's required to get them right down into the slots but without you know without marring the top of the frets while you're pounding on them okay so uh, all we're gonna do I'll take our first fret here and uh, I've just attached an extension here to my uh, drill press so that I can set the guitar on top and I've just taken um, a uh, radiusing block and just set it under here um, you know, as long as the neck's sitting flat on it, then it's not uh, its not going to be a problem of it uh, marring the back. And it's one of the reasons why I do it before I finish it and everything too. I like to put the frets on. Uh, for one, I like to, you know, string it up and see if everything's, you know, you know going to go well um, in final assembly. And, uh, and two, you know, for just for the fretting and stuff like that, get all the filing and stuff out of the way before the... Just in case anything happens, you can go back and fix it before the, the finish is on. Okay, so I'm going to use the plastic end of this uh, hammer here. Now, you'll remember we cut our tang back a little bit, so it's uh, not quite as long as the slot, and that's because whenever the, the center gets pressed in, it, um, the ends of the tang will spread out and kind of lock into place. So we have to make sure that we uh, save enough room on either side for it to do that. So we got to make sure that this is pretty much centered and that we have a gap on either side here to allow for that expansion. And we're just going to... Just tap it in there. That's all we need to do. And we're going to go down the entire length of the fretboard, tapping all these in here, getting them in, and then once we get them in, uh, we'll come back and uh, we'll show you how to press in a couple of them. Okay, so now that we've got them all set into place, um, I've gone ahead and I've started to uh, to press them here. And all you want to do is you want to line up your call so it's centered over the fret. And you just want to that's pretty good right there. And you just want to apply pressure slowly and let it sink in. Okay. Might take a couple of hits if you're not using an arbor press. Um, you know, I might invest in one of those one of these days, but uh, for now, this is how I do it. And uh, just check and make sure that it looks like it's all nicely seated, nice and even. Um, and then move on to the next one. Line it up. Get it to where you want it. And press. A little bit here. And I mean, if you do have an arbor press, um, it's much better for doing things like this. Um, you know, they got a whole system available at some of the manufacturers or whatever. Um, 
they work specifically with um, these press calls here. But uh, that's the basic gist of it. You just keep going down until you get all the way down to the end. And then uh, we'll come back, we'll nip off all of the ends, and we'll start on filing. And uh, we've got to file our chamfer into the, uh, the ends of all of these too. So uh, we'll finish pressing these things in and then uh, we'll get back to it. We'll get on to that step. Okay, so we got all the frets in here. You can see they're all pressed in. Haven't cut the ends off yet because there's one more thing we want to do. We just want to take a look down the neck here and any high areas should be quite apparent. So then what we want to do is we want to take our hammer and anywhere where we see a high spot, give it a whack. We're looking pretty good. Those are probably the only two areas there that I can see. Okay, we're looking good. So as you can see, uh, I just got my LEDs lit up right here um, because this is another process that could interfere with the wiring behind there. Uh, when we put a fret in there, it could have made contact with a piece of wire and uh, caused it to uh, not work properly. So now that we know we're safe on that regard, we can uh, we can go ahead and power down these LEDs and uh, you know take the battery box out. And um, but right now we're just going to use a pair of fret nippers here, and we're just going to cut them off flush, and then we'll come back and I'll show you how we're going to file the whole deal, uh, file them nice and flat this way, and then file the bevel on them. So, uh, yeah, I'll cut these off and then uh, we'll come back and have a look at that. Okay, so we're going to get on to uh, finishing the ends of the frets here. Um, that's, you know, filing them flat, um, filing them so that they're level with the sides of the neck and then putting the uh, bevel on them. I'm going to be using a really simple tool for this. Um, this is just a block that I have made up. Uh, it's got a file, um, kind of, it's got a curve cut it cut in it and then the, uh, so the, t the file fits really tight and then the file is pretty much hammered in there um, so we got about a quarter inch exposed on this side here and uh, and you'll notice on this that there's a flat side here and then there's a slope side so the flat side how we do this is we're gonna take the flat side here and we're gonna set it and you'll notice before I do this um, that I have went ahead and have uh, put a bunch of masking tape on the face of the uh, of the fretboard and reason being is uh, previously I have slipped off here and nicked a few of the frets and it, it hits right on the top of the crown so uh, when that happens with this you have no choice you gotta pull the fret out and uh, put a new one in so I want to try to avoid doing that so I just went ahead and I've put about three or four layers of masking tape over top here and uh, just so that I know that if it slips off, it's going gonna, it's gonna to bite into the tape rather than the top of the fret. Um, I've also um, just went ahead and put a little bit of tape on the body here as well, um, just to be safe. Okay, so we're going to take the flat end here of this, this one here, and we're going to just rest it on the fretboard and so that the file is resting flat on the frets here. And we're just going to work it back and forth. Let the fret do the or let the uh, file do the work. So we're not putting any downward pressure on it. We're just running it back and forth here. And you'll be able to feel when you're not taking any more material off, and where more material has to be taken off. For example, we can feel this down here, so we can go ahead and. Hit that a few more times just to get this down so it's, so it's at the same level as the rest of them. Just this end one here. I'm looking pretty good now. There we go. So I'm not taking any more material off you'll be able to hear it and kind of feel it. Uh, sometimes it, yeah, you can hear it like a chirping type sound. 
And uh, so I'm just going to do one side and I'm going to flip this over, this block here. And uh, so that um, this angled side is facing, is uh, resting on, on the front of the fretboard. And this will give me an angle on the uh, file here. So the file's sitting on, a, I believe it's about a, a 30 degree angle, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, once again, I'm just going to go back and forth here. Slowly, especially at first, so you get some of that top stuff ground down, and then it will start to glide a little bit easier for you. And this step is going to take a little bit longer than uh, whenever we filed the ends flat, just because whenever we nipped the uh, frets off, we uh, you know we nipped them off pretty close to uh, flush, anyways. So uh, the file didn't have to do that much work, but uh, putting the um, putting the bevel on the ends is a different story. It's taken off quite a bit of material, so it's going to take a little little while. So we'll just keep working at it with this uh, block here, going back and forth carefully, and uh, it's not a race. Take your time by all means, and uh, we'll keep going until we get them right down right down so that they're not taking any more material off of the uh, off of the frets and then uh, we know we'll be done we can flip the, the instrument over and do the same to the other side so uh, we'll work away at this and get it going and then uh, we'll we'll flip it over and start the other side okay so we've got them uh, pretty much beveled to exactly where we want them here it feels nice and smooth can't feel anything hanging over here and uh, next what we want to do is we want to take our uh, fretboard erasers, I'm going to start with 180 grit, work my way up to 400, 600, 800 and 1000 and we're going to flip the guitar over and do the same on the other sides. So uh, start with the 180 here and we're just going to take it and just run it back and forth. These things are great. I mean, they're exactly that. They're a little bit flexible, and uh, they come in whichever grit, and uh, they're great for fret work. You can kind of, uh, for the tops, the crowns, you can kind of curve them around or whatever, and they'll take on the sh actually start to take on the shape of the top of the crown. So it's kind of neat. That's really all we need for that there. Maybe a little bit more down here. Looks good. Okay, now we'll step it up to 400 grit. Shine on here. And just like an eraser, this will leave, you know, like a uh, little curly cue kind of things. Okay, up to 600. just want to follow the uh, angle and that's pretty good there up to 800 things are really starting to get smooth now getting a nice shine off them now these still will be polished after we level and uh, recrown the frets. We're going to polish them up, get them to like a mirror shine, and 
approved. Uh, these erasers will be part of that process as well. Okay. Looking good. And finally, thousand grit. Thousand grit will give us that nice high, high gloss buff look here. When we get our micro polishes on here though, it's really gonna look, it's really gonna gleam. And I mean, the shinier your frets are, the smoother the guitar will play. So, something to keep in mind too. Okay, so we've got these looking pretty good. We're just going to peel this piece of tape off and have a look at what we're dealing with here. If I can get this piece of tape off. There we go. That's pretty nice. Yeah, that's nice. Okay. So now we're going to flip the instrument over and we're going to do the same to the other side. Let's flip her over here. And uh, once we're done that, we can uh, work on starting to um, prepare to do some finishing.